Hey, I'm Alex Ayers, and this week I'm going to teach you how to tune your own piano better than a professional could in one sitting. This video is for people who got their piano for cheap, or maybe even free, and don't want to spend more on a professional tuning than the piano is even worth to begin with. This is also for people with no particular musical skills or hearing abilities or anything like that. You don't need special skills to do what I'm about to teach you. But how could you possibly do a better job than a professional? Well, the key phrase is in one sitting. If your piano is significantly out of tune, it's better to tune it over a stretch of time rather than all at once in one sitting. Unlike the professional, you can have multiple sittings. You can tune the piano once one day, wait a week, tune the piano again, and each time it'll get closer to actually being in tune. As you tighten a string on a piano, that will put more tension on the frame and the frame will compress just a little bit. But if your piano is significantly out of tune to begin with, as you tighten every string on the piano, that means the rest of the strings are slowly getting more and more flat as you go. And so a professional will spend all his time wrangling the piano, getting it approximately in tune, when what his skill set is perfect for is getting it exactly in tune. You don't want to waste his time or your money tuning your piano roughly when you can do that yourself. Now, if you do research into tuning pianos, you'll quickly find out that it's not as simple as getting a chromatic tuner and just tuning each note of the piano to the official definition of what that note should be. Why is that? Well, first I'll have to teach you about overtones. I'll make it quick, I promise. When you pluck a string, the whole string will vibrate on whatever frequency is natural for it. Smaller sections of the string will also vibrate at higher frequencies. The first overtone is half the string will vibrate at twice the frequency. That is, if the string is a theoretical physics problem perfect string. Now, because your piano has real strings, and if it's an upright, far from perfect strings, the overtones don't match those perfect twice the frequency intervals. Instead, they'll be a little off from that. Because you're playing several notes at once, it's very important that the overtones of your lower notes match up nicely with your higher notes. If not, the piano can sound like it's clashing with itself, even if, theoretically, it's perfectly in tune. What we can do to fix this is we can tune the piano slightly wide. What this means is that you'll start at A4, just because that's the standard, and then say you want to go an octave lower than that. So A4 is 440 hertz, so you'd expect A3 to be half that, 220 hertz. What we're going to end up doing is tuning it slightly flat, maybe 217, and when you tune it slightly wide like that, the overtones match up much more nicely with the notes above them. As the notes go lower on your piano, the notes will get more and more flat, and as the notes go higher and higher on your piano, they'll go more and more sharp. This is what's called stretch. Next, you'll need some tools. The most important tool, obviously, is the tuning hammer. You can get a cheap tuning hammer off Amazon for like 20 or 25 bucks, but what will probably happen with that hammer is that the handle will unscrew from the head along the axis of the head, which means that if you try to loosen your piano strings, instead of loosening the strings, your tuning hammer will unscrew itself, which is not helpful. If you get a higher quality tuning hammer like mine, it unscrews along the axis of the handle. These higher quality hammers will cost more like $60, but compared to a $200 professional tuning, you're still within budget. If you decide to get a cheaper tuning hammer, you might be able to use Loctite or something like that to make sure that it doesn't come loose, and then you might be able to tune your piano just fine. Next, you'll need some rubber tuning mutes. There's not much that can go wrong with these. You can just get whatever set you can find. It won't make much difference. Optionally, you can also get a tuning mute ribbon, and that way you can tune the piano a little bit more efficiently, and we'll talk about that later. The final thing you'll need to get is an app for your phone, and there's going to be plenty of apps out there that say piano tuner and are free and are garbage. What you need in this app is for it to listen to your specific piano and hear the overtones of each string and use that to calculate a stretch curve for your specific piano. This will get you really good results without having to have any skills at all. It will cost you around $25. The app that I've used is called Piano Meter and I think is only available on Android. For iOS, There, I think there's an app called PT1 
Um, I don't have an iPhone, so I can't vouch for it. But the important thing is that you find an app that mentions in its description that it listens to your piano. Now that you have some background information, it's time to assess your piano specifically. If you get the free version of the app, or a chromatic tuner works fine for this assessment, go ahead and open that app, and then play individual notes on your piano across the whole piano, and try to see, in general, how sharp or flat your piano is. The most common occurrence for old, free, or very cheap pianos is that they will mostly be flat. Across the whole piano, you'll be flat. It is also possible for the whole piano to be sharp or vaguely centered on pitch, but just out of tune. If, when you're playing the notes on your piano, some of them are dead and don't voice at all, or you notice some other problem with the mechanism of your piano, I can't help you. Many piano professionals can also fix mechanical problems with pianos, and that's another reason why they're incredible. However, if you have one note that sounds out of tune with itself, that's something we can fix, because that means that of the two strings that make up one note, they are not in tune with themselves. They're two different notes, and so you play one note on your piano, and you get two different sounds out, and that's why it sounds bad. We can fix that here. If your piano is all flat or all sharp, then what you're gonna need to do is a rough tuning. What this means is that you aren't gonna fiddle with it to get it exactly where you want it. You're gonna get it approximately where you want it and then move on. Because, as I said before, as you tune your piano, the whole thing's gonna go out of tune again. And so it's not worth you wasting your time. You wanna go quickly here. What you'll wanna do is an overshoot. You'll want to overshoot where you want the strings to end up so that when the piano goes flat again, you end up approximately where you want it to be. My rule of thumb for this is you wanna overshoot by a quarter of the amount that you are off. And so if your whole piano is approximately 20 cents flat, then what you'll wanna do is make each string 25 cents sharp. At first, you'll do it so that it's five cents sharp, but then after a while, you wanna see where it starts and go 25 cents sharp from that because you wanna keep your piano vaguely in tune with itself, but try to over. It's very possible that you'll do this overshoot and you'll still end up flat. That's okay. You'll just do it again later. Maybe let some time pass in between tunings. Your arm will probably be tired anyway. Once you've gotten your piano vaguely level with what correct tuning should be, now it's time to do a precise tuning. This means that you can spend more time tuning the piano, you can do the stretch curve, you can try to be more, much more precise, and the piano won't undo your work as you go. Right before you do your precise tuning, you should take a second and let the app listen to each note individually all the way across the piano. It'll take a few minutes, but as you go, you should notice the stretch curve changing as it gathers more information about what your specific piano sounds like. This is the reason you paid for the app. It lets you get very good results with no training at all. Now to get into actually tuning the piano. You'll notice that the strings will not all be grouped together. They'll be in at least two different sections. What you wanna do is you wanna start at the lowest most side of the treble section and work your way higher. And then once you've done all that, you'll start at the high end of the bass section and work your way lower from there. Now what you'll do is you'll use your rubber mutes to mute all but one string of a note, and then you'll t tune that specific voicing string while playing the note. It's best practice to have the handle vertical when you attach it. It's also best practice to ease down to where you want the note to end up. And so if your piano is flat to begin with, you'll have to tighten the string past where you want it and then ease it back down. This will help the piano keep its tuning for longer. Additionally, if you have to change the tuning of your piano by more than 10 or 15 cents, it's a good idea to play the note really loudly a few times after you've tuned the string. And oftentimes it'll go back to what it was before, not all the way, but towards where it was before. And that's natural, there's nothing wrong, but it's better that this happens now rather than the first time you play something loud on your piano. Just tune it back again to where you want it and move right along. At least for the first couple strings, double check to make sure that the tuning pin you're on is the right one for the string you're trying to tune. Because if you mess this up, it's very easy to get a string way out of whack. 
and it is possible for you to break the strings and suddenly it's way more expensive to get your piano tuned. Once you've got your tuning hammer on the right pin, what you'll do is while continuously playing the note that you're trying to tune, you'll tap starting on the head half of the handle and using that same amount of force, work your way down the handle, watching the app to see if the string is tightening. Now, if it's not tightening, even when you get down to the bottom, then return to the head half and tap harder and work your way down the handle again. This is especially important the first couple times that you tune a string because you don't know how much force you need to use and it's much better to get there gradually to make sure that you don't overturn it. Once you've tightened it, then you'll want to bring it back down to where you are and you'll notice this, but you need way less force to bring it back down into pitch than you did to tighten it in the first place. And so I recommend starting that process over again, starting down here, tapping it very lightly, and working your way up with more and more string to avoid overturning it again. Once you've done a few strings, you'll have a good idea of how much force you need to turn the pins, and so then you don't have to do this process as extensively. But I do recommend it for the first couple strings to get yourself calibrated without any danger of hurting your piano. Once you've done your first string on a note, you'll unmute one additional string, and then you'll move your tuning hammer to the corresponding pin. While consistently playing the, the key, you'll bring this string sharp and bring it back down again. Now what that'll sound like is it'll start sounding awful. It'll sound like a key that's out of tune with itself. And as you go sharp, it'll start to sound like one note. But remember, you wanna go down to the note. And so you need to, it'll sound like it's one note. You need to go a little farther and then bring it back down until it's sounding like one note again. This is the best way to get the strings sounding like the same note. If you don't think you can do this, you can tune each string individually to the app, but it's much more likely that they'll be slightly off from each other and it'll sound a little worse. So it's best that you tune it by ear to make it sound like one note. It's, it's not that hard. You're just listening for two notes or one note. You're trying to get it so that it sounds like one piano note. If it sounds like one piano note when you're hitting the key, sounds good, you can move on. That's all you need. If you've got three strings on that key, unmute the third string, bring it up, back down till it sounds like it's the same note as the other two strings. Once you've gotten all the strings sounding like the same note, you can move on to the next string. To show you what that sounds like, I'll do one note of my piano. It'll start sounding like two notes, go to sounding like one note, I'll go past, sound like two notes again, back down to one note. <laughs> If you did get the ribbon, you can insert it in between the strings like this so that for each note there's only one string unmuted. Once you have it this way, you can tune each of these strings with the app, and then you can put away the app and tune the rest of these by ear, matching the string you've already tuned. This is a slightly faster process in my opinion, but it doesn't make that big of a difference. This is really not required. And that's it. You should be able to tune your own piano. Now that you've gotten very close to optimal, if you still want it to sound better, this is when a professional tuner can come in and make your piano sound amazing. They can do a much better job than this once the piano is very close to in tune. They can tune your piano using something called a temperament, which requires an incredible ear. They have an astounding sense of hearing, way better than mine. But that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed. Next week, I will be making a prototype for the new board game I'm trying to work on for the next board game competition, and maybe even play testing it a little. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next week. Sits out at my table, put your mind at ease. If you relax, it will enable me to do.
renew the soul, Dr. Lawrence. Make your wildest dreams come true. 